Hey, welcome back. This is a bonus lesson for this mini series where I'm going to show you how to take this character and render it in Adobe 3D Stager. The steps are actually really simple, but it can take your character to the next level. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So in 3D Painter here, I have my character is ready to go. It has all the details and I'm happy with all the textures. I went ahead and look at it from different angles and I'm quite happy with how it's looking. Now, one thing that I'm going to show you before I send it to 3D Stager, and again, this is kind of like a bonus tip here, is that you can change a few things all at once for multiple meshes or multiple texture sets using the layer instances. So for example, if I just remove all of this and go here to the effects, I'm going to go ahead and find something like this HSL Perceptive, and I'm going to drop it here on top of everything. So this is basically your hue saturation value in Photoshop if you're familiar with that. And it basically allows you to change the color on the flight. So because this is on top of everything, this is just an effect, I can go ahead and change the hue, right? And you know, let's say that I'm happy with these uh, new colors. I can also increase the saturation, maybe reduce that a little bit or change the lightness, you know, all of that good stuff. But I wanna do the same thing on the body and the base, right? I can just go ahead and right click, copy layers, and then select the body. Control alt and right click. There we go. So we're now in the body and I can right click and paste my layers. However, there is a much better way of doing this type of effects, which is using the paste layer as instance. So I want to click on that one and you'll see that it has exactly the same values as the head, just as you would expect. And I'm going to do the same thing for the base. All right, let's go ahead and click on paste as instance. There we go. So what's cool about it is that you see that this specific layer has this little icon here, meaning that it has a hierarchy, right? Or it's a, it has a parent. So if I click on this one, you'll see in the properties of this specific layer, um, you cannot change anything. It's telling you basically that this is the layer that you have selected, but there is a parent layer that controls the effect, right? So we can click on that one and that will jump back to the head layer. And it has the same um, sort of icon, but it's sort of like fill. So it is slightly different. And I can just go ahead and select perceptive and change everything. Now, when I change the hue, you'll see that it changes. Uh, it might lag a little bit, but it changes everything at once. So it's really, really powerful technique. And I actually quite like this, um, this combination of colors. So I like to, you know, throw in um, an HSL perceptive every now and again when I'm working on something more graphic like that. I just play around with a combination of colors uh, or different palettes. But anyway, that's something else that I wanted to show you. If you turn it off, it will be turned off for the other uh, meshes as well. So very practical stuff. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and render this character out. So I have a 3D Stager open already. So this is how 3D Stager looks. Um, at the moment, I don't have anything. And I'm just gonna show you how you can import things just in case you wanna do it, let's say outside of 3D uh, Painter. So I'm gonna bring in Matt directly into the 3D Stager. And that also helps me to bring in my cameras. So I'm gonna drag and drop the FBX in here. And you see, we have now Matt in here. This is just the, uh, the original uh, project from Matt. Uh, so you'll see on the right-hand side, we have the outliner or the scene. I'm gonna scroll this back a bit so that we can see more of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Matt character, which is obviously what we've been working on, and I'm gonna delete it because we've been working with it in 3D Painter. The reason I wanna show you that is because you can drag and drop any FBX and have it in here. Um, but I just brought the FBX with all my cameras so that I can render you know, the, the official cameras for the contest. So now let's go ahead and jump back into Painter. And you don't need to export the textures or anything like that. Everything is going to happen at the same time and it's going to pack everything for 3D Stager with a single click. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on File, go to Send To, and I'm gonna click on Send to Substance 3D Stager. So this process is actually really, really fast. And what it does is that it exports the actual character or the mesh, and it would export all the materials with all the textures that you use in Painter. And it's gonna recreate and connect everything together in Stager. There we go. So now we have uh, Matt, our character, and you see here at the bottom left, we have uh, the three materials, right? Uh, we have the old materials from the, the one that we imported, but that's all right. We can just leave them there. And you'll see, um, Everything is working really nice in here. Now, this is currently using ray tracing, which is giving you the, the really nice quality that you can see here with all the bounce light and the translucency and all of that. But if you want to work a little bit faster, you can go ahead and click on this switch right here to turn off ray tracing, right? So this is a, a more, you know, a, a faster way of working uh, before you render. All right. So all of these uh, things that you see floating around, those are the cameras. So I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, maybe a camera from the front. Uh, let's actually do something like this. This one right here. And it automatically selected or highlight the, the camera that you selected here in the, um, in the scene. And actually, I'm just going to go for something uh, a bit further, like this one right here for the, 
for the head. Uh, and I'm gonna click on this icon. And you see when I hover over any of these cameras, we have this uh, little circle here. This is basically to look through the camera. So I'm gonna click on this one. And now we are looking through the camera and you see we have the framing. So the cameras are automatically logged because uh, the idea is to have the render sort of like that matches to anyone else that participate in this contest of Matt. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is, right? If you wanna get out of the camera, you can click on this icon and you're back into the sort of like free camera. Right? And you can do the same thing for any camera. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to show you before uh, we sort of like light up the scene. The first one is that if I get closer here, uh, you'll see that all of these edges are a little bit jagged um, compared to what we have here in Painter. Right? So this is Painter. Let's go back in Stager. And that is because we have to set the amount of tessellation for each individual object. So let's go ahead and open up this uh, step four. That's how I call um, this video. Let's actually double click and call it matte. All right, and I'm gonna select the head and in the head properties, let's expand this back up again. All right, so in the head uh, object properties, you'll see that we have transform, object, material, and animation. So the animation is more like um, a turntable animation, which you can also try to do. The material is basically all your textures and in the object properties, this is where we can set the displacement. So you see displacement is enabled by default just because that's what we had in Painter. And what we need to change is this fixed per triangle subdivision. So I wanna set this to uh, something like 10, which is pretty high. And you see straight away we have a really nice and clean surface, right? Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the body because we also have some, some height here for the, uh, for the vest. So I'm gonna click on body and I'm gonna type this, um, let's go for 10 as well. And there we go. So we have something nicer in there. And again, for the base, I don't think we're gonna need any of the displacement because we don't have anything. Uh, we didn't do anything with displacement in the base. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the lights really quickly. So on the left-hand side, we have um, objects, we have materials, and we have lights, and also backplates or images. And this is essentially your library within 3D Stager. But I'm not gonna go through all of these palettes. They are very uh, self-explanatory. And to be honest, we don't need to deal with objects because we already have our object. We don't need to deal with materials because sending it from 3D Painter has already set up our materials with the textures that we need. So I'm gonna concentrate just on the lights. So here in the light section, you have your main four type of lights. You have your area light, you have your spotlight, directional, and point. So I'm gonna keep it very simple, but I'm gonna come back to this in just a second. We have the environment stages. These ones are kind of like things that would create, um, you know, not just the lights, but also the entire environment and cameras and all of that. So I'm gonna also avoid these ones. I'm gonna click on that one. And this environment lights, that is essentially the atmosphere or like the, the environment that is uh, lighting up the scene. So these ones are gonna give you your starting point or your base for the ambient light. So let's go ahead and create something um, already, something like a studio um, environment light, maybe, maybe this one right here. I'm gonna, maybe this one that has uh, two front panels. So I'm gonna drag and drop it in here into the viewport and that changes quite a bit. And you see that in the environment here, we have this global lighting and this is the environment light. So we can go ahead and change the intensity, change the rotation, or just like we did with some 3D Painter, you can press the shift key, right click and rotate the lighting around as you can see. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on ray tracing so that we can see uh, a much better result and more realistic result of this lighting. And I think this one works quite well. So I'm gonna click shift and right click just to rotate around. I'm gonna try to find a nice reflection. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the intensity of this environment quite a bit. And the idea with reducing the environment light is just to get you started with something that is a bit subtle, is giving you that sort of um, ambient light, but it's not necessarily your key light. I'm gonna create uh, some custom lights for the key light, and that's the reason why I reduce the intensity here in the environment. If you set it all the way to zero, it's just gonna be black. So let's go ahead and keep it to 23 or 25. It should be okay. All right, so the way that the lights work is very intuitive as well in 3D Stager. And one of my favorite tools is that you can just place them based on the normal of the object. So what that means is if I go back here, I can go ahead and click on this area light, drag and drop it. And you see that as I hover over the character, it sort of like snaps to the surface. So I'm gonna try to place it around here on the side of the head. There we go. And immediately this gives me something a lot more interesting, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and push this back a bit. So, and I'm gonna create another one from the other side. So click on area light, drag and drop it around there. And this one is a little bit higher, uh, but yeah, it's totally fine. I'm gonna push it back a bit. 
there we go. And I can go ahead and call this one uh, left. And I'm going to call this one right, obviously. OK, so if I go ahead and select the left one, I can change the color. So I can click on this uh, swatch right here, and I can make this any color I want. But again, I'm going to try to keep things very simple and subtle. Uh, so I'm going to go for just a, a warm light coming from the left hand side. And you can also control the exposure and the intensity. So I'm just going to go for kind of like what I had before, something like that. Let's go ahead and select the right one. And for this one, I'm going to give it a complementary color to this sort of slightly warmer light. So I'm going to go for a bit of blue. All right, something like this. I think it's fine. And then we can also increase the exposure as well. So I think the one on the right hand side would be my key light. And usually in a case like this, where you have a very simple uh, lighting setup, uh, the key light should be the, the strongest one or the, the one that has the, the brightest points, right? So I'm going to set it to, yeah. 11.1 is fine, and then take the, the left one and maybe reduce it slightly. All right, so as you can see, this whole process and the whole setup here in 3D Stager is super intuitive, really quick to, um, to get used to it, and the results are fantastic. Now, if I get closer here or go into one of the cameras, let's actually go into, um, I think this is the one that we've been using. All right, so I'm going to use this one for the render. You see that everything still looks uh, a little bit noisy, even though we have the ray tracing enabled. Now, this is still a preview. It's obviously a much more um, high quality preview, but it's still a preview. If you want to increase the, the sample so that you get uh, less of a noisy image here, and if your computer can handle it, you can click on this um, gear icon here, and then you can change the samples in here. I want to leave it as it is because, again, the, the final resolution is the one that I care about, not necessarily this one. So let's actually go ahead and keep it as it is. But now that we have set up the light and we're using the cameras for the project, all I need to do is turn off the ray tracing just so that I can, you know, work a little bit faster again and actually render this image. Now, the process of rendering from 3D Stager is incredibly easy. I'm going to go ahead and click on this Render tab. And you'll see that it is very, very simple. On the left-hand side, I have some settings, and on the right-hand side, I have my cameras that I want to export or, or render. So right now, I only have one uh, with a checkbox, and this is the one that I was sort of like looking through. So essentially, this one, uh, the C7 three-quarter RF up, right? So front up. That's the one that is being automatically selected. Now, I can go ahead and give this a name. I'm calling it um, Matt. And then I'm going to save it in my desktop. And the format, I'm going to change it from PNG to PSD uh, 16 bits. Now let's go back to the render settings really quickly. We can change between uh, real time or ray tracing. I'm obviously gonna go for ray tracing because that's the, the high quality. And I'm gonna use my GPU. So this is enabled. And in the preset, you can change the quality. So right now um, it's set to custom, but you can go to draft and you see that the samples basically drop uh, significantly there. I'm gonna go to medium, high, and I think ultra is a little bit too much with 10,000 samples. So the presets for high is probably what I would go for. If you want to increase this a little bit more, go for 2K for like 2048. But a value of 10,024 for the samples is more than enough. Now, I'm going to also leave this denoise export so that um, it produces two images, one with noise and one without noise. And I obviously go for the one without the noise. But in case I want to you know, tweak things in post-production, I like to have both. I'm also going to render displacement, obviously, so that we can get like the eyes and the nose and all of that. And the resolution is going to be full. So whatever the, the size of the camera is going to be full. That's about it. Let's go ahead and click on render. And I'm going to pause the video right now and come back when this is ready. All right, and 3D Stager finished rendering. And here is the final quality you see. It's very sharp, very clean. And it, of course, saved it as a PSD. So I'm just going to close the software right now. So I'm not going to save this one. And I'm going to go ahead and open up Photoshop just to show you the result uh, because it has a couple of extra things that are really cool. So I'm going to drag and drop the render from 3D Stager. And here we go. So as you can see, the quality, like I said, is really, really awesome. Um, and it comes with a bunch of extra passes that you can use for compositing. So the background comes on its own. So you can turn that off or change the background altogether. So for instance, you can just double click on this uh, swatch here and maybe just go for a similar color to the base, just this green color, maybe not as bright. Um, you know, just play around with this. Uh, it's, it's just a fun way of um, presenting your character. In this case, I think uh, a plain gray, maybe a lighter gray works just fine. And like I mentioned before, you also have the render image compared to the, the noise image. 
for the most part, the denoise image is the one that you want to use. Uh, but sometimes the render image might give you a slightly better quality in certain areas. But yeah, like I said, uh, the denoise image is usually the best one. Um, then you have these additional layers. And if I turn on the, the folder right here, you'll see we have a depth pass that sort of like gives me these uh, really nice sort of like mist pass that I can use in compositing. Um, we also have this object selection mask, but basically it is just a way to select the different objects in the scene and also the material selection. In this case, the materials are exactly the same thing as the objects because we have because we have a different material per each one of the objects. But um, this allows you to select different parts of the character really, really easy. So for example, I can create a custom mask. Uh, I'm just gonna show you this uh, really quickly. And when I bring in some levels just to adjust the, the image, so I can just use my levels in Photoshop just to brighten things up, but I don't wanna increase the brightness of the entire render, just the character. So what I can do is clip these levels to the denoise image. Um, however, this is also removing some of the nice shadows that I had, some of the cast shadows. So let's undo that. And instead what we can do is create a custom mask. So I'm gonna use this, um, selection mask just to select this area and then create a mask for the uh, for the levels. So I'm gonna bring in my magic one. So let's go ahead and click on this one and select the magic one. And I'm gonna choose this color and this one as well, holding the shift key just to add to the selection. And let's go ahead and hide now this. And inside here, this, uh, this is the mask for the levels. I'm gonna hold control and I to invert it. And that basically inverts whatever I had selected. Uh, let's go ahead and hold control and D to deselect. And if I go ahead and go into the mask, holding the Alt key and click on the mask, just like we did with Painter, um, you can see that this is the, the resulting mask. I'm gonna invert it, Control I to invert it, and then come back. And now whatever I do to the levels is going to be done just to the character. So that's what these additional layers are for. And I definitely use them quite a bit. I can just tweak you know, things like the, the intensity or the brightness or the colors and all of that independent from the background. All right, so hopefully these additional tips and the workflow to render the character in 3D Stager have been of help. Best of luck in the contest, and I'll see you next time.